right, let's try to get one more in for tonight. Uh, 2022 AMC 12A, problem 17. Suppose A times sine of X plus sine of 2X equals the sine of 3X has more than one solution in the interval zero to pi, not inclusive. The set of all such A, where that happens, more than one solution, can be written in this form. Basically interval notation, that's a union symbol from P to Q, union Q to R, not including any of those values, where P, Q, and R are real numbers with P less than Q, less than R. What is the sum of those three values, P, Q, and R? Don't really know how to begin. I'm just gonna start by attacking this, I feel like. So I'll do A times sine x plus two sine x cos of x, you should have that memorized, is going to equal, I'm gonna think of this as the sine of two x plus x. And then I'm gonna utilize the sine of a plus b. For this one, my sum and difference formula memory is same sign along with SCCS, SCCS. You could memorize it as University of Southern California Computer Science maybe, but I just need this part. It's going to be sine a cos b, that's the SC part, and then same sign is S-I-G-N sign. And so this is a plus, this is a plus. And you're going to have sine A cos B. Now we'll do the C-S. It'll be cos A sine B. I also remember it goes A, B, A, B, A, B in that order each time. So here then my 2X is the A. So we're gonna make this the sine of 2X times the cosine of x, because that's the b value, okay? Uh, and then it's same sine cosine of 2x times the sine of x. I'm gonna immediately convert this to two sine of x cosine squared x, because this becomes two sine x cos x, combine the cos x to get that. I don't know what I wanna do with that one yet. Uh, we'll hold off for a second. Um, cosine of 2x times sine of x. I do see that every term will now have a sine of x value. Can sine of x equal zero? Only if zero and pi were in play. So as such, I don't see any concerns. Even if it could equal zero, maybe it would be okay if we did anyway, since we're not really focused on x specifically, but we know that it's not zero, so it doesn't really matter. Um, if you divide by sine of x on both sides, you're gonna get one plus two cosine of x. And then this is going to equal, uh, the sine of x goes away, you have two cosine squared of x, plus that sine of x is gone as well. What should I do with cos of two x? I feel like I don't want the two x, so we're gonna need the double angle formula for cosine, but I've got only cosines left, therefore I'm gonna target uh, two cosine squared of x minus one. There are three versions of that double angle formula. So now what? We're gonna have a times one plus two cosine of x equals uh, two cosine squared plus two cosine squared is four cosine squared of x and then minus one. Now I do notice this is difference of squares and if I switch the order it would be just right. Two cos of x plus one is one of the factors. So we could conclude that a is equal to two cos of x minus one. Because when you divide, it divides into that difference of squares. So now what are we gonna do? We don't really know what to do with this exactly just yet. At least I didn't when I solved it. So what I did was I said, okay, what if I didn't divide? What if I distributed, moved everything over, and so I had four cosine squared of x, and then plus two a cos of x, and then a on the other side becomes negative, so I have minus 
a plus one or minus a minus one. What I'm trying to create here is a quadratic in cosine as the variable. So cos of x is the variable, and so we don't have any a squareds, which is why we're targeting that. We don't quite know if it's gonna work, but let's go back and read it again. More than one solution. So I'm gonna need this to have more than one solution. Maybe I want the discriminant, and the discriminant could be greater than zero, which means there's two uh, real solutions. So let's go over here, uh, negative b, or b squared. I'll just write the negative b. We don't actually need it. Negative 2a plus or minus the square root. Uh, b squared is going to be 2a squared, which is 4a squared minus 4. a, which is 4, being the coefficient of cosine squared. c is negative a plus 1. I'm just going to write it as negative 1 times a plus 1. Now the first thing is this negative and that negative cancel. I really only care about the discriminant. Yeah, there's a denominator of eight. It's not gonna play a role. And so what we're gonna do next is write this as 4a squared plus 16a plus 16. 16 times a plus one. We need that to be greater than zero. I'll divide by four. a squared plus 4a plus four greater than zero that factors a plus two squared greater than zero. Oh, got it, I'm standing up. Um, not a lot of board space here, I guess, but there's, there's a lot of work this problem takes. So this is a, a parabola, essentially, and we need it to be greater than zero. It's greater than zero everywhere except when a is negative two. See, because if, if it doesn't happen, you're only gonna get one value for cosine that works. Uh, and sine of x can't equal zero, so that wouldn't have given us our other solution, and that's why you, you have to have this come out positive so you can get two roots. Otherwise, the sine of x being zero, if it was allowed, could have provided the other root, or the other solution to that equation. So then a cannot equal negative two. Let's look up here. That must be this q value in the middle. So you're gonna have something from p to negative two union negative two to r. Okay, now we just gotta get the left and right. We hope, we think that's what we need, right? We're looking for some confirmation maybe. Well, let's go back to this other thing we developed and think about it, because we didn't really do anything with it. We kind of got to it and weren't quite sure what to do with it yet. That's how my, my solution process developed. And so I went back and said, okay, well, oh, cosine cannot, x cannot be zero. What would cosine be when x is zero, it'd be its max value of one. So in fact, if cosine cannot equal zero, then, or x cannot equal zero, then a cannot equal two times one, two times one minus one, which is going to be two minus one, this is a dot. So a cannot equal one. Oh, well that might be r over here, so now we'll have negative two to one union. Now we just gotta figure out what that P value is. It's probably the other max value or min value it would be for cosine. That would mean that this is negative one. So two times negative one is negative two minus one. We're also gonna find A cannot equal negative three and that must be the other value. Let's go ahead and add this up. Um, you're going to get, oh, P, Q, and R. I was trying to add all four and was like, I don't think we're gonna get it. P is negative uh, three, Q is negative two, R is one. Negative five plus one is going to give you A negative four. I'll try and film more over the weekend. You guys have a great night, enjoy your day.